The objective here is to give a general overview of the CompTIA Cloud Essentials exam, and I'm going to use primarily as my resource just the objectives that they published here. This is really a beginner's test, and if I could just give you one piece of advice in terms of overall what you need to do to prepare, you just really need to know your acronyms. I think many of the things could be figured out in the test, on the test, using context clues and such, but if you don't know acronyms or can't even infer what the acronym means, I think the test might be really challenging. Now CompTIA says they think you should have about six months of IT experience before you even take the exam. Maybe you've watched a lot of videos, read some books on this, maybe you listen to certain podcasts like uh, Data Knots or the Packet Pusher podcast. I think those really help you get like a real world view of all these cloud concepts. If you're doing things like that, you'd probably be okay with uh, not having that six months of experience. And then I just don't see a person really succeeding at this if they didn't have a pretty good um, networking background to begin with. So I teach CNG 101, that's Networking Fundamentals at the Community College. If you understand how computers are networked, you'll understand more about the cloud and how the cloud works. One of the first objectives is to know the characteristic of cloud services uh, from a business perspective, they say. And these services are your IaaS, SaaS, the software as a service, the uh, PaaS. And I think I might have seen a DR as, as in disaster recovery as a service. There's a lot of as a service out there. But those three big ones, I said right here, I as, S as, and P as, those are the three big ones. So here's a good question for you to answer uh, for each of these. Uh, when are these useful or in what types of scenarios are these useful for? Now the two biggest objectives percentage wise is cloud computing from a business value perspective. So at that moment, you might be talking about standard operating procedures. You might need to know enterprise resource planning, AKA ERP. Um, this is just a business management process uh, software that manages things like financials, your supply chain, operations, reporting, manufacturing, etc. cetera. So uh, that would, the cloud would be a part of that. Then we have TCO. The bottom line for cloud TCO is that it's not all about the cloud, it's about your business. And in the late 1980s, a guy named Gartner popularized this term, uh, total cost of ownership. And basically all it does is define the long-term costs of maintenance. So on the exam, you might get yourself a uh, equation you have to solve and determine what the annual, annual cost of your cloud is. So maybe you'd want to answer a question like this. What is the difference between licensing fees and subscription fees? Another good question is what types of payment options do cloud service providers offer? Again, know your acronyms and you should do just fine on this exam. The second objective worth 20% of the total exam are um, subjects or topics on the uh, cloud types. Yeah, cloud types you need to know. You need to know the difference between private, public, hybrid, and community clouds. Another objective is to talk about the steps to successful adoption of cloud computing. But if we're talking steps to uh, migrate or deploy a, a cloud, uh, here are some terms you should know. So what does lift and shift, rip and replace, and phase migration mean? Another objective they cover is impact and changes of cloud computing on IT service management. So if I was you, I would really try to wrap my mind around what is service management? What does this mean? Um, maybe Google the words cloud service management and write about the articles you read on there. Or just poke around and really, again, wrap your mind around what service management is. Now this objective you'll see a lot in the study materials out there about the cloud, but you should know about how to plan and prepare and minimize disasters. So right here, this recovery time objective and recovery point objective, make sure you really wrap your mind around those two acronyms. Uh, that might fit into that uh, sixth domain right there. So there you go, just six domains. We're gonna skip the note they have right here. Uh, they'll go ahead and break down the domains even more right here. Um, I'm just going to point out a few things. When it says understand common terms, I've already given you 
a pretty good road map to follow. Um, focus on these acronyms, then look for any other acronyms that might apply to the cloud and make sure you know those. And then the terms I put into these questions, like if you know these, you should be good with common terms. To go with 1.2, describe the relationship between cloud computing and virtualization. Well, there's the IaaS kind of virtualization where we're talking about the hardware and then you get to put an operating system um, of your choice on that infrastructure. But there's also storage virtualization and a question like this, when would you use file storage versus block storage? If you could write out your answer to that question successfully, then you would be uh, prepared for 1.2 right there. And another thing I hope is not on the exam is this whole name early examples of cloud computing. I mean, there's a timeline you can look at. I researched, I even read about, you know, the early adoptions of clouds, different scenarios of that, and it was completely worthless. I mean, of course I asked why right here. Hopefully you don't get any history questions on this test. 1.4 says understand several common definitions of cloud computing and their commonalities and differences. Uh, if you just learn these five essential characteristics of cloud, you should be good. And I'll even get you started here. Um, you got on demand, uh, metered is a characteristic, and then you gotta go find the rest. 1.5 says recognize what types of organizations might benefit from cloud computing. My joke is it's easier to say who wouldn't benefit because the cloud's pretty useful. And just as a bonus here, disaster recovery as a service and then XAAS stands for anything as a service. Uh, there's bad guys who participate in ransomware as a service. Or at least I heard that term on one of my cybersecurity podcasts. And me bringing that up goes right along with 1.7 when it says distinguish the difference between the clouds, including the ones that we've been talking about for the last five minutes. Okay, let's go to the second domain. Oh, this looks like there might be some essential characteristics here for you to look at. Starting with 2.1, recognize the similarities and differences between cloud computing and outsourcing. Maybe that objective means this, um, that cloud computing is a kind of outsourcing of software, data storage, and processing. Users access applications and files by logging in from any device that has internet connection. So I mean, this is sort of like the actual definition of what the cloud is. But I'm confused by what they want here with similarities and differences. But down here on 2.2, one of the first things that pop up is scalability. And so I wrote this question over here. Um, what's the difference between scalability, elasticity, and right sizing? Whether this is increasing the number of processors you're utilizing on the cloud or the amount of storage you're utilizing. What I wasn't prepared for is this whole term called right sizing, but using just common sense or inferencing skills, I had figured out that right sizing just means the cloud will give you the right size of whatever it is you need. Again, storage or processors or whatever. Security is an important one to know, no matter who you are or if you're even going to take the exam. And I'll talk more about that in my other cloud video called cloud essentials tutorial where I'll do a speedy review with more questions like this. But the other four essential characteristics here, they look pretty straightforward and I wasn't prepared for a total of six actually. This time to market one is the one that's weird to me. And I kind of feel like it really connects with this hardware independence. Like if you're using the cloud, you're not buying your own hardware. And so therefore your time to market is so much quicker because the uh, cloud providers already have that hardware ready to go. You just have to get your data or your systems over there onto those hardware components that they're offering you. 2.3 says demonstrate how the characteristics of cloud computing enhance business value. The first thing that comes to my mind is flexibility, but there's definitely games you could play in order to uh, try to maximize your profits. Okay, some of these we've already talked about, and this part just really leans heavily on your knowledge of networking. I wish CompTIA provided a solid example here so we could better, you know, get ready with these steps to successful adoption of cloud computing services. But it's easy enough to understand the roles and capabilities that vendors can provide. And if you ever become completely dependent on a vendor, that whole concept is called lock-in. So there's some more vocabulary for you to remember. So what does lock-in mean? Now there are skills required in an organization to adopt cloud computing. 
And if you don't have those skills, you could pay someone else to have those for you. But one way or the other, your business will have to pay for those. And this is an interesting point, what critical success factors exist. I do not know where they're going with uh, that like three worded bullet point. But there's another acronym for us to know, SLA as in service level agreement. The Wikipedia article will immediately give you some more um, acronyms to learn about. But in a nutshell, it's a commitment between a service provider and a client. So that cloud service provider and a client. In this agreement will be things about quality, availability, responsibility, who's responsible for what. You might not be aware of it, but you probably, even as an individual, have already had a SLA with your ISP, your internet service provider. So in order for you to get internet service, you probably are not allowed to host a website from home or uh, do certain things where there will be a gigantic increase in traffic to your home. You know, all that fine print that you probably didn't read when you agreed to pay that bill every month to get your internet. But according to Wikipedia here, in some cases, as the SLA will have technical definitions for a mean time between failures, mean time to repair, or mean time to recovery. So that goes with the RPO, RTO topic, I was, or acronym, I should say, that I mentioned before. It's crazy, but maybe not surprising to know that they are planning for failures, they're planning for mistakes, and in the in agreement, you're just agreeing to what level of mistakes are acceptable and for how long they are. Funny story, just last night, my wife was upset that Hulu wasn't working, so she called them, and they gave us a free month just because there was some technical issue that they are having, and I was thinking if she never called, we wouldn't get this extra month, so that's kind of a good thing to do. If you don't want to read the fine print, just be sure to pester them when anything happens. Okay, so for 4.4, we've already touched on this. The uh, multiple approaches for migrating. Where is that at? Here we go. Lift and shift, rip and replace, and phase migration. In domain 5, there's impact and changes of cloud computing to IT service management. So 5.1 is all about strategy, design, operation, and transition. 5.2 5.2 talks about idle. One of the big things I try to remember from idle, I'll show you a funny, maybe not even helpful way to uh, remember the six activities that are a part of idle, but the whole idea of planning, then improve, engage, design, and transition, obtain and build, deliver and support. That's a lot to remember. Usually in computer science, we like acronyms. So for me, I just went with PI and then drive to OB's defense structure because OB is a YouTuber my son likes and he's always playing these shooting games and there's defense structures in them and there's driving and there's chaos. And okay, again, a ridiculous acronym. If you could come up with a better one, please post it in the comments. But basically, IDO is all about a business approach to technology. Now our last one is risks and consequences of cloud computing. These types of topics would be a part of that other acronym over here, SOP, Standard Operating Procedures. So just Google that acronym to learn more. And this one is particularly funky. This might be where some math can pop up, but how are direct costs and cost allocations, how do these things work? And for our final one in this video, it's pretty ridiculous, but understand how to maintain strategic flexibility. Like you maintain strategic flexibility by being on the cloud. Maybe not signing multi-year agreements with cloud providers, or maybe you should. It all just boils down to your organization's needs and current financial status, I guess. So that's just an overview of CompTIA's Cloud Essentials exam. This document came from the CompTIA website, so it's freely available out there for everyone to look at. And I hope you learned something, and I hope I kind of helped you uh, focus here, because taking exams sure can be stressful. You can regurgitate a ton of acronyms. You probably can figure out the answer to a lot of those questions just by making those uh, context clue kind of inferences. Well, good luck, and thank you for watching.